What's something in your life that you take for granted? Maybe it's a hot shower, food in the refrigerator, or a car that runs. When it comes to the church, maybe something many of us take for granted is the fact that we have a hymnal to guide the hymns we sing each Sunday. But we didn't always have a hymn book. The angel Moroni didn't have a separate set of plates to give Joseph on this topic. Instead, only a few days after her baptism, the Lord revealed to Emma Smith, it shall be given thee also to make a selection of sacred hymns as it shall be given thee, which is pleasing unto me, to be had in my church. Although we do not know a lot of details about Emma's selection process, beginning in 1832, some of the hymns she chose were published in the church's newspaper. As you can see, the church's first hymn book, published in 1835, says on the title page, A Collection of Sacred Hymns for the Church of the Latter-day Saints, selected by Emma Smith. At the October 1839 General Conference, Emma was appointed to create an expanded hymn book published in 1841. While the 1835 hymn book only had 90 hymns, Emma's 1841 hymn book contained 304. Some of the hymns from Emma's two hymn books are still in our hymnal today, while others are no longer present. To get a feel for what the early saints sung, let's listen to a few beautiful lyrics from Emma's early hymnals. One hymn beautifully portrays Christ's Last Supper and suggests a message from Christ offered on that occasion. He took the bread and blessed and break. What wondrous words of grace he spake. This is my body, broke for sin. Receive and eat the living food. Then took the cup and blessed the wine. Tis the new covenant in my blood. Do this, he cried, till time shall end in memory of your dying friend. Meet at my table and record the love of your departed Lord. Another hymn found in Emma Smith's 1835 hymn book includes the following lyrics from the hymn, Arise, My Soul, Arise, which portrays Christ's wounds on the cross as praying for us and pleading for our forgiveness. My name is written on his hands by bleeding wounds he bears, received on Calvary, they pour effectual prayers. They strongly speak for me. Forgive him, oh, forgive him, they cry, nor let that ransom sinner die. Think about those lyrics. My name is written on his hands. What does it mean to you to know that, metaphorically speaking, you are written on his hands? Spiritual songs such as these have the power to stir our souls and connect us with the Savior. Emma's 1841 hymn book contains these lyrics, which are familiar to many of us today. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. For me, reading these lyrics helps me feel connected with the early saints, and more importantly, connected with Jesus Christ. If you'd like to explore Emma's two hymn books in greater depth, as well as modern music that can connect us with Christ, click the link in the description. In Doctrine and Covenants 25, we find this statement from the Lord. My soul delighteth in the song of the heart. Yea, the song of the righteous is a prayer unto me, and it shall be answered with a blessing upon their heads. Today we have many opportunities to more fully integrate the song of the righteous into our lives. For example, Within the Sacred Music app, published by the church, we can find a variety of wonderful music resources, including music for youth and songs of devotion. There are many other ways to feel the Spirit through music, such as the songs of numerous Christian singers, including members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. My hope today is that each of us can reflect a little on the music we listen to and contemplate how we can more fully integrate a little bit more of the Song of the Righteous into our lives, and as a result, draw closer to Jesus Christ.